Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today, inshallah, I have a very, very important, uh, you can say, episode or program to show you, inshallah ta'ala. I hope you share this with others uh, because I think this will help put things in perspective for many, many people. Now, what am I going to talk? I'm going to talk about transhumanism. And there are going to be different parts. I'm going to talk first. I'm going to show you. May Allah bless this uh, sister who gave me some of this material that I'm going to be showing with you. Actually, a lot of the material that I'm going to be showing with you, showing you. And then I'm going to add on some verses of the Quran and some other stuff. And then uh, it's going to be about transhumanism and how it relates to the Quran. Because that's our ultimate goal is to understand all of these things and the events that are happening with us with how it relates to the Quran. Okay, In order for us to get a Quranic view of where we're going as human beings. So we're going to see a round table discussion that talks about the same issue of transhumanism from a philosophical perspective, which is a little bit more academic. And then uh, I will be uh, sharing uh, information uh, from the Quranic perspective uh, of what this all means and where it's going and some words about how does this apply to the Fitna of Dajjal, but then ultimately Dajjal, Masihu Dajjal, the person, how he is the ultimate manifestation of where we are. Now, there's no doubt about one thing, and that is that human beings are in a transition. We are in a stage where we're no longer part of the modern world. Okay, The modern world has come to an end. Uh, in a sense, Western domination has come to an end, and new forces are now going to begin to take over the world and have an influence in the world. Now, but uh, with COVID especially, it's very clear that the old world is now going to finish and a new world is coming in. And one of the, uh, you can say, marks of that or one of the signs of that, you can say, actually the word alim or ayn lamim also, which means knowledge, also means to mark. Right? So when you mark something, you know something, so to say. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm going to introduce you to this idea that is being promoted uh, with children. And I'll start off with that. And then we'll see this roundtable conference uh, that talks about transhuman, uh, transhumanism in a very uh, sophisticated, but yet in a very deceptive way. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to show you a bunch of articles so you get an idea of where, where the World Economic Forum is going with this. And then finally, I'm going to conclude my remarks about how the what the what Quran what light the Quran sheds on this, and uh, also some uh, aspects of how the Jal is the ultimate manifestation of this. So sorry for this long introduction. If you've never subscribed, please do subscribe, uh, and inshallah ta'ala, you will uh, find what I'm going to share with you uh, interesting and fascinating, inshallah ta'ala, uh, and it's very surprising. Very, very surprising. So let's get started, inshallah ta'ala. So inshallah ta'ala, let's get started with this. Uh, so uh, future humans, or in other words, post, uh, post-humanism post is one word. Uh, 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 transhumanism is another word. Okay. So what is the future that they are teaching kids and people? And so we're going to see this book about little kids. And then we're going to see a roundtable philosophical discussion on this. And then we'll take the discussion further from there. Gene therapy. Okay. Gene editing tech that might be used for designer babies is already being developed to save lives. It's, it's more than that. And uh, let me just uh, share this with you. Look, you know, somebody has a baby, let's say year 2000. Okay, they had a baby and they had version I, uh, iPhone 1. So in this, they're able to make the baby 10% smarter. Okay, and by the time you have your second baby, they've already come out with three, four versions of gene editing where your baby is maybe more expensive, but they can make that baby, you know, 30 times more uh, smarter in terms of memory or 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 given blue eyes and different skins and uh, cure diseases and so on and so forth they they'll be able to do this it's already happening so they'll be able to do this and uh, see uh when you're able to do this uh, it's it's one issue to say 
uh, you know, how is the older sister going to look at the younger brother who, when the older sister knows I'm three times smarter than my younger brother, or I'm more beautiful than my sister, etc., etc. You get the point. But gene therapy is real. It's happening. And a very good example of that, as I will show you, is this thing that they're putting in our arms nowadays, the RNA, the mRNA uh, technology, which is the beginning of this transhumanism process. This is why this is so important. Now, and the references in the Quran uh, are unmistakable. Okay, so it says gene editing tech that might be used for designer babies is designer babies, designer babies for the rich, by the way. So the poor people won't be able to uh, buy this stuff. Uh, seek to modify genes uh, in a faulty body part. As these changes fix the problem but are not passed on to the next generation, gene therapy is legal. Genes are, and there is a Supreme Court, uh, you, I'll show you this towards the end, a Supreme Court, um, you can say, decision on about gene therapy, which has made this whole thing legal of what's happening with these uh, things that are being put into our arms. Any type of gene therapy is now legal, okay? <clears throat> I'll show you the Supreme Court uh, papers on that if I get a chance. Um, genes are usually introduced into the target cells using a genetically modified virus. Gene therapy uses viruses that, is, that does not cause illness. They are modified to affect only the correct cells. So uh, let's continue inshallah. Uh, graphene. Now those of you that have been studying about the thing that they're putting in our arm have probably come across the fact that this thing is made cold in order to hide uh, this material called graphene, okay? A lot of nanotechnology will use a form of pure carbon called graphene. Graphene atoms are arranged in interconnecting hexagons that make a sheet just one uh, atom thick. Graphene is super strong. It conducts electricity and can be transformed into tubes and balls and future could be made the future could be made from graphene so one of the things about it is is that you know it's 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 it, it, it can it can have electricity in it and so also when you have all this radiation uh and then it's hit going inside you and inside you, if your body there's graphene it's all going to affect you okay and so i'll be talking about this in a little bit uh, imagine a machine so small it could inject into your body. This nanotechnology where devices are measured in nanometers, that's a billionth of a meter, such a machine, let's call it a nanobot, would be around the size of a virus. And it could travel around the body and the blood and go in and out of cells. It might sound like science fiction, but nanotechnology is already a real thing. We'll have to wait for nanobots, though. Okay. Now, uh, ma magnetic bioprinting. This is where they take a printer and print out, and I'm going to show you, uh, this is already happening with bones, where they can 3D print your bones, where they can print your hand uh, in 3D. Okay, I'm going to show you this in just a little bit, but um, just to kind of like read what uh, the author has written over here. Okay, uh, bio ink may have been emerged uh, may be merged with nanotechnology. Tiny fragments of magnetic iron are added to the cell in the bio ink. Instead of being squirted out into patterns, the bio ink is then arranged using a magnetic field. This is similar to the way a laser printer or photocopier works. Magnetic bioprinting could be a way of speeding up the process. Then what? It talks about printed food. You know, Bill Gates' uh, synthetic meat that he's been talking about. The te techniques used to print body parts can also be used to create food. In fact, it is much e easier because food does not need to be brought to life after being printed. In, so, you know, in the, uh, our food generally is brought to life and then you eat it. He's saying you don't have to go through this process because we already have the proteins. We can put the pro we can make a printer with all the proteins, put the proteins together, and it's going to print it out and it's going to do what it's supposed to do. Okay. Um, in the future, meat we eat might be made like this. Livestock farming is more damaging to the environment 
than growing plants, so it might prove less polluting to make muscle cells in a factory and print them out as burgers, chops, steaks, yum, he says. So now, the point here, one of the points I want to make is that, you know, this is a completely non-fitra uh, world in which, man, as you will see in the philosophical discussion, in which man becomes the god. And he prints his food and he prints his bones and he prints his whatever hand. And uh, so this is where humanity is. This is not, you know, when we were small and we heard about, I remember I was maybe in fifth grade and I heard about they're making this thing called internet and, you know, you can be at your home, but you'll actually be out in the streets. And, you know, I read this and then 2000, year 2000 something comes and here we are. We ha I had my first email and the internet and all of this thing that we all, of the young people just take for granted. There was a world, there was a time there was no internet, you know. I used to live in that time where there was only one phone at home and that's it, you know. So that world is coming out where they can magnetically print things into existence. Okay. So, and, and it's completely uh, non-fitra, non-fitra based environment, non-fitra based uh, reality. Uh, okay. Uh, forget improving body using its own biology. Let's go bionic. Bionic are mechanical body parts that replace and improve on the natural version. In the future, we may add bionic enhancements to our bodies and what would make us cyborgs. Okay. This is now very important because this will directly connect to a verse of the Quran. I'm going to show you. Uh, short for cybernetic organisms. Some people already have bionic legs and arms and electrical implants in their body. Cyborg technology could go much further, transforming people into half-human, half-robot. Let's look at why we might want to do that. Why might we? And this is a big, this agenda, by the way, as you will see, is a big part of the reset agenda. The environment is getting bad. We shouldn't have natural food. We should have synthetic food. Uh, we are going to change human beings. And remember, I'm not going to talk about, I'm going to, I'm going to only touch upon one aspect of this, but there are really two big aspects of this. One is political, economic he uh, hegemony over the world, control over the world, kingdom of Suleiman. And the other is immortality. Right? So these are the two things that they want to merge. They want a kingdom that lasts forever. And they want life that lasts forever. And the Quran speaks about this in different places. But I'm going to be only sharing uh, one or two aspects today. <coughs> then he asked the question, how would you feel about nanotechnology working inside your body? Is it okay so long as they help you? Would you worry that they would put that they would be put there without your knowledge or permission. Now here's the really interesting part, okay? Human consciousness is created in the brain. According to them, human consciousness is created in the brain. Islamically, the ruh, the, the maskan of the ruh, the, the place of the ruh is the heart. Something about the, you can say, the pumping of the heart, okay? Something about the pumping of the heart and our breathing that connects the ruh to or lets the ruh stick to this body. When the nafas, the word nafs means being, nafs is from nafasa, means to breathe. And as long as you're breathing and as long as your heart is beating, the ruh is connected to the body. And the Quran was revealed upon the heart of the Prophet. This is where the ruh is. Right? Nazzal ala qalbika bi'idhni rabbi. So the Qur'an was revealed upon the heart of the Prophet because this is where the Ruh is. The Amr of Allah to the Amr of Allah. The Book of Allah is the Amr of Allah. And the heart has the Ruh. Yes, alunaka ani Ruh. Qul al Ruhu min Amri Rabbi. It's the Amr of Allah. So anyway, that conversation aside, they feel that you can take a human being's brain and suck out something that they call consciousness from it and upload it somewhere else. Okay, so in that conversation they say this, human consciousness is created in the brain. Where the body fails, the brain fails too, and consciousness fades away. 
Efforts to repair the body, slow aging, replace our biology with cyborg machinery are all efforts to maintain consciousness, meaning immortality, in a way. Meaning, of course, we know everything will end, the universe will end, but much longer than a uh, thousand years. A future technology called mind uploading might take all make, make, might make all that unnecessary. We could transfer from a consciousness to a computer where it could exist forever. Some say it's impossible. Others say we're doing it before 2050. Who's correct? Okay, I'm going to mention a few things about that uh, as we uh, go forward. Nanotechnology is already used in some unlikely places, and then he gives these examples. Uh, sunscreen blocks out dangerous rays using nanoscale particles of zinc and titanium oxide. Scratch-resistant glass is toughened. With, and so he's just justifying, you know, nanotechnology through these other uh, uses that we've uh, had for it. Okay, now let's go on to the next part. So let me start with this example here. Here's an organization. What does it do? Uh, if you're sterile and lost hope, we can give you a child. If you're homosexual and de de dearly desire a child, we can. We would hope uh, a desired child who would carry your genes. We can take care of that. We can, you know, help. Uh, so these are uh, organizations that are all working in the field of gene therapy. Okay. Uh, even for example, uh, just to show you an example. Even, for example, the thing that they've been putting into people's arms, what is it called? It's an operating system, okay? Uh, enabling drug discovery and development operating system. This is uh, Moderna, as everybody knows. And uh, so what do they do? They create something that goes into your cell in the ribosome. It teaches your cell, gives instructions to your cell to create the disease, which is the, the spike protein so it creates this protein so the dna the r uh, the mrna okay uh, the uh, and it says here the mrna is a temporary set of instructions for cells to make protein so it gives instructions to your cell to make a protein which is the disease and then it creates that disease and uh the mrna medicines and software of life and so anyway the point being is that uh gene therapy and crisp which is uh, changing the genes, cutting the genes, uh, you know, molding the genes into what they want. Um, okay, let's continue. So they're, they're already working with cloning and genetic therapy, and all this is happening, okay? And this is all part of the reset, the, the, the fourth industrial revolution. This is going to be a very big part of what they see as the future, okay? Um, and then let me just give you one example, uh, you know, surrogate mothers, uh, let me just, uh, show this to you, you know, you can become a surrogate, you can carry somebody else's baby or to become a parent, right? This all has to do with the same phenomenon of once we get to the gene level, how can we make people live longer? How can we make human beings, superhuman beings? How can we make God into like, or how can we make human beings, the human God, as one uh, of the philosophers uh, will be discussing this soon, uh, you know, he's the human God, not the God, uh, God, right? So this is how they see it. So you become a surrogate. So, you know, in the Prophet said, the mother will give birth to her slave. So there's a lady, she is in Thailand or she's in Korea or she's some poor country. She carries the baby of rich people. And now she has to eat the food. They say, hey, we, you're carrying our baby. You better eat this food. You can't do this. You can't go out. You have to do this. So they control her life. And she's doing this for money. She's carrying someone else's baby. And they think that this is going to lead to a perfect world. Okay. And uh, so here's another example of the same thing. Uh, become a parent or become a surrogate, okay? Carry somebody else's baby. And uh, now let me share this with you. Uh, 3D print printing methods, and by the way, this is uh, articles being pr promoted by World Economic Forum, okay? 3D printing method turns goo into a hand in minutes, okay? Then uh, bio ink could transform a, sca a, a scaffold for growing human tissue, okay? Uh, this cer uh, ceramic ink 
can 3D print bones directly into the patient's body? Here's how. Again, all of these are being uh, promoted by the World Economic Forum. This is part of the Great Reset. Okay? Uh, Biorevolution is kicking off. Here's how to harness its opportunities early on. And then somebody might be saying, what does this have to do with Quran? It's interesting, but how? And then I'm going to come to that. Deep Mind has put almost every protein in the human body online in 3D. So in other words, they're able to print it. They're pr able to print every muscle, every tissue, every every different tissues for different parts of the organs. They're able to pr print it out. Okay? And uh, tiny bots could deliver drugs directly into our central nervous system. Here's the Supreme Court uh, ruling. I won't go into the details of this, but it's basically about, uh, yes, you know, uh, where it is feasible, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, Supreme Court basically ruled in here that uh, G DNA and gene therapy and all this uh, can be patented, can be used, can be, you know, further extended. Okay. <coughs> Harvard University is talking about the same thing over here. <coughs> CRISPR, which is used to genetically modify babies or genes and you know they always talk about you can do this to prevent disease but at the upper end it's about creating designer babies and creating uh th this hope that they have that if we change ourselves right so there was a time where if you're not happy with yourself you know self-sabotage yourself uh almost do a mini suicide with tattoos or piercing or hurt yourself in some way now it's going to a whole different level of you know just become a machine become something different instead of a tattoo right and uh i already showed this to you so uh let us now go ahead and watch this discussion that takes place that's very interesting i have this on speed so that we can listen to this in a quick way because we just talked about uh, this extremely popular book of, of uh, harari homo days as I have you here, Natasha, and I have theologians like Miroslav, I'm interested to see what, according to the two of you, is the difference between the man-god, sorry, the god-man, Jesus Christ, uh, 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 and the man-god, which apparently, according to Harari and a few others, we can create through our technological uh, things, and which is one of the reasons why, and maybe you can start with that, Natasha, um, you are also literally in the business of sus suspending life, uh, and you know, with the idea that at a certain moment, uh, technology will be on that level, that people can live much longer or even forever. And, because, and, the, and the question then related to this, what's, what's, what's the connection between our mortality and our morality? I don't use the term immortality because I think it's a misnomer. I think it's heavily sequestered to the myths of the, the early proto-scientists, the Taoists. And it's also, you know, I think... Don't be cousined. The word cousin means to be deceived by people's words. Don't be cousined by her. Okay? And you'll see her behavior when I think it's a Muslim brother or somebody is asking her a question about or trying to challenge her assumptions uh, and then you see her behavior at that time. Okay, so let's continue inshallah about uh, Satra, no exit, you can't get out, it's, you know, you're stuck there forever. So I think of immortality as, is not only a pipe dream, but an, an, uh, it's an impossibility. Our, our solar system has a lifespan, our sun has a lifespan. So um, I, alternatively, I think about a limited lifespan for a person to live as long as he or she um, desires or is capable. And if not, then, then cryonics is an alternative until uh, later medicine can't catch up with the disease. But looking at this post human era, I don't think we're there yet. I think that that has been subscribed to us by the academics of postmodernism. And I think they, they, they reached out for the posthumanist era because they had no sensibility within academics and in the mainstream about technology and the advances in artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence, nanomedicine, nanotechnology, uh, CRISPR, like with genetic engineering, or gene therapy, etc. at all. So I think there's this leap. I think we're in the transhuman era, where the transhumanist era is about a human in transition to becoming something other. Now, what is that other? That could be an evolved human. It could be a human merging with artificial intelligence. It could be a human that, in my view, would become more humane. So that's how I look at it in, in that regard. So immortality, no, limited lifespan, yes, redefining death. We've been doing that for eons, determining when someone dies and then we find it, oh, we could have cured that. We used to hold a mirror up to someone's nose, listen to their heart. We can, you know, bring people back to life that 100, 200 years ago, even 50 years ago were considered dead. So that transition to becoming 
post-human, but not non-biological, not some avatar, some mm -hmm. automata out there, but a, uh, a human that's in the stage of post-biological meaning, not having a shelf life, not limited by our genetic makeup. Right, so, but, but, and, but if I understand this correctly, um, you and your husband, Max, uh, in where you live, Scottsdale, Arizona, you have this um, car center where... In my lay language, you freeze bodies. Oh, okay. Um, it's called Alpora Life Extension Foundation. My husband is CEO. I'm a member, but I don't run there. I'm, a fa I'm an academic. I teach, etc. But I did do a scientific breakthrough there where I proved that two neurons in a simple animal withstand vitrification uh, rather than freezing. Freezing is, is a misnomer. It's the wrong term. It's vitrification because you don't want uh, crystallization of the cells which crack. And, um, so vitrification is the methodology that's used now in cryonics for suspension. My scientific research, the scientist part of me, proved that long-term memory does exist in simple animals uh, after cryonics preservation or vitrification. Um, it's a growing business. Um, people will opt for it. Doctors are more interested in it now than ever. Uh, we just suspended our beloved animal companion, who is like my son. Um, he, was, he died of old age. But um, you, it, the thing about cryon is it's, it's, it picks up where today's medicine leaves off. Mm -hmm. It's not some science fiction dream. It's based on evidence-based science. It works. We brought back C. elegans, and that, that is a fact. So it's not whirly-hurly science fiction. But, but just for my own imagination, and, 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 uh, it's a center? Uh, and, and, and the bodies there are no, no longer alive, but they're also not dead. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's another one of the problems with, with today's um, FDA and all the rules and regulations. You have to physically die before your, uh, you, the, the team, the suspension team, which is on standby, takes you for the surgery. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we've seen people who are pronounced dead come back to life with, mm -hmm. you know, beating of the heart, you know, with, with um, using different medical equipment to bring them back. So that doesn't bother me so much. But the facility, Alcor is a large facility. It has several operating rooms. It has doers there. It has neuroscientists there. It has uh, neurosurgeons there. It's, 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 um, a highly reputable company and some of our, our leading uh, thought leaders uh, globally are signed up for credits because um, it is the best safety net for those who uh, yeah. want to live a longer life. Yeah, and because at a certain moment the technology is yeah. they can get out of this and, yes. and then wonderful things happen. Um, in, in your transhumanist reader, you write transhumanism is a non-religious force of life that rejects faith, worship and emphasizes a meaningful approval to living in form by reason and science and progress. Mm -hmm. what, yeah, what I, mean? I, I think that... Um, that, that can be taken in two different ways. Number one, it could be taken that it's agnostic or atheistic and that any type of faith is, is uh, forbidden. But I don't agree with that at all. I have very strong faith in spirituality. Um, I've always been a, a spiritual person. Um, I was born a Episcopalian, a Christian. I went through confirmation. Um, and as a teenager in my early life and through teenager and all through my life, I've donated more of my time helping others and volunteering for causes around the world than I have in making money. So it's, you know, it's like you're bad if you don't believe in God. I'm not religious, and nor do I believe in God. But that doesn't make me an evil person because I've volunteered most of my life in saving other people. Right. Uh, uh, no. By the way, a, a note on that. Uh, I've donated most of my life saving other people's lives. This idea of humanism, that human and humans are friend or friend, human friendliness, we can say, you know, general human concern, general human friendliness. The biggest problem with that uh, is that that is uh, it's like you're friends with everyone except the dad of the house. You know, you're friends with uh, all the strangers of the house, but you're not friends with the mom and dad of the house. And so humanism is great uh, as a concept, but it's limited because uh, it's like you're denying the right of the father and the mother, but you're friends with everyone else. And people tend to do that when they have different mental uh, problems. And so without that relationship with Allah, there's no philosophical basis. Uh, as you'll see problems even in her statements uh, that contradict each other, as uh, it will be pointed out as you listen to this. So humanism is an interesting concept, but humanism is not possible without God. Without Adam and Eve, there's no, we're not a human family. Without God, there's nothing to unite us. Without God, we're not all equal. Somebody's rich, somebody's poor, somebody's uh, from this caste, or he's from that country, and so on and so forth. So the only thing that who makes us equal is the idea that we have the same parents and we have the same creator. There's no other basis for humanism. Uh, but, you know, this idea that, oh, forget about religion, I spend most of my time helping people, it's a bunch of hogwash. Because why are you helping people uh, if, if, you have, uh, if you don't have a God to please? And, and so, you know, there, there are other intentions and other motives. And we sometimes... Uh, defend ourselves like this lady is or talk to you know we're, we're doing things but we're for with what intention are you doing it and so I'll leave it at that for now and this is a much longer conversation that I do want to have at some point 
of you know fair enough. But listen, and I'm interested by the fact that you that, 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 that you have this, this faith in reason, science, and progress being the fundament of our yeah. culture. Uh, uh, you know, to create a better society. I think we need a better society. At the first round table, we went over uh, good and evil and took a look at. Of course, we need a better society. It's called Khilafa. Some of the problems around the world, and we heard, heard uh, incredible narratives about uh, people overcoming odds and, and how are we going to do with this and, and what is it and what does it mean. But the bottom line, in, in my view, is that the human um, mind, the introspection, the creativity, the ability to explore, <laughs> discover new planets, discover. No one discovered America's already here, but let's say Columbus, so to speak, discovered America, which he did not. But it's um, we are explorers as a species, as Homo sapiens sapiens, and um, we have the ability now through the use of ethical technology and evidence-based science to carve a what I consider a more apt, a more intelligent, a more ethical, a more humane society, and that's the whole reason behind transhumanism. It, yes, it is to extend life, to be sure, but not as we are, not as the humans that we are with our reptilian brain and our fight-or-flight instinct that brings about the, the um, in the first panel degree, the money-making, but I agree with that Amazon is fine, it's not a bad guy. So, um, you know, come on. <laughs> so on the one side, Amazon's guy, uh, good, but we don't want the reptilian brain. We don't want how Allah created us. We don't want fight and flight. Uh, responses. We don't want to be human anymore. So remember, this is all going to connect with the Quran at the end. Uh, yeah, when I signed up uh, in 1990, it cost $40,000. Yeah. And I, it's vitrification, so I am a neuro because I, I want a different body. I think that whole body prosthetics is sensible. We've seen that great advances in robotics and narrow AI and haptic systems and interfacing with neurology to form uh, robotic limbs for people who've gone to war and have suffered and been injured. They now have prosthetic legs and arms, etc. Um, so I think that we'll be designing new bodies. I think it's going to be a major field in design and building innovation. So $40,000 when I was, well, I went, when I was in the 1990s <laughs> uh, back then, but now it's more. But, you know, things cost. Yeah. But you get a life insurance policy, yeah. and I pay, what, $100 a month in well, life insurance. Well, uh, rich people have been trying to live forever for a very long time, and I think giving them... This yeah, so this person's name is Qasim Eid, so he's most likely Muslim, and he asks a very good question, which he completely deflects, and you could see that arrogance in her. Just watch this, and listen to his question. He, he may not have put it in the best, best way, but he asked a very good question. Of technology is going to be extremely dangerous. Well, why do you think it's rich people? Because, I wasn't rich, uh, but I'm not I don't rich. have forty thousand dollars. Well, well, listen, I didn't either. Yeah. I got a life insurance policy. And that was back in the nineties. Now I don't know how much does it cost. I actually got admitted to Columbia University, uh, but I didn't have the money to actually pay for uh, my college. I didn't get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently, or I used to actually work in DHL. I just carry boxes. So when I look at how some people are, you know, spending their money or the way they plan for their lives, everyone got a free choice. Everything it's uh, their own. <laughs> Uh, hard-earned money, but I think there's a lot more important and very urgent problems that the world should look at, uh, and the very first example should be starvation. We, when we think about you know, solving the future. Don't you think that transhumanism has considered that? I just got through saying, I spent most of my life volunteering and helping others, of including course. working for the Home for Incurables and feeding people on the street. So yes. don't put words in my mouth, no, sir. No, 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 no. I, I, think I, I, think it's important. I think it's important that we, we consider, we step back and So now, this person actually corrects her. He kind of like schools her. And uh, s s just watch. Consider what the larger problem is here. And I think the larger problem is what should be our attitude towards human limits, towards human finitude. Now, there are some people who despise limits and live to transgress them. And there are other people who respect limits because they view them as not just an obstacle to certain aspirations, but as actually constitutive of the meaning of our lives. Uh, and I think that the most, um, the most obvious case of, of, of a human limit without which human life would have no meaning, at least by my pre-transhumanist lights, um, is, is time, is time. The idea of living forever seems like hell on earth to me. I agree. And not only because some of the people I know might live as long as I do, it's not just that I agree. Um, but I think that, that, you know, there is a sense in which the urgency of, of our values and of, of, of moral values, of our aesthetic experiences, of our religious experiences, the urgency of all this is premised on the limitation of time. And I think it's very important, you know, before we learn to be post-human or transhuman, I think we have to learn to be human. Um, and so I, I am very suspicious um, of the transhumanist enterprise, firstly, because it's conceived and enacted by... When he says in the academic world, he am very suspicious, it means doubtful and don't agree. Okay, that's just a nice way of saying what the brother earlier was saying. And, and see why he says, as everything... Okay, he says a very good point here. By humans. And somebody <laughs> has to make the judgments. There you the say judgments, it. we will never transcend 
that kind of fight. And transhumanism is another human project. Uh, you know, I, I'll, just, I, there was a, I'll just stop with this now. So I'll just stop there for this. Uh, the point, so so this is, you know, they're, they're working hard on this. They got companies, they're doing this, people are paying money. And this is the the way that the World Economic Forum, basically the United Nations, this is where they want human beings to go. This is the direction they want human beings to be in. Now, there's one verse that I have been promoting, but I want to promote it again in the context of this entire discussion. That, uh, and then I want to make some final remarks about the, the, the features of the Dajjal, how the Prophet described him. And I might do a, a complete different episode in detail showing the actual text of the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ in this regard. But for now, I want us to listen to this uh, verse of the Qur'an and uh, maybe appreciate what it is saying i only want to focus on one part of this verse uh, so let's uh, do that <laughs> Over here, Allah says that Shaytan said that I will definitely lead them astray. And I will definitely give them hopes. And I will cut, order them to cut off the slit the ears of the cow, which is already happening. I have a whole video on that. وَلَآمِرَنَّهُمْ And I will command them. This is the part I want to emphasize. وَلَآمِرَنَّهُمْ Huh? For what? I will command them. When they have gotten the gene, the beginning of the gene technology, which started with cows and farming. Okay? And this crop and that crop and this banana mixing with that banana and this cow and breeding the cows and so on and so forth. That's how it started and that's what the Quran seems to be indicating. And then finally extending to the human world and in technology and biology and biology and technology coming together biology starting with animals the cows the farm the the livestock and then coming into human beings and i will command them after that and one of the reasons that you know i will command them uh to do what and I will command them to change the creation of Allah. And then, <clears throat> whoever doesn't see that what is coming is what? وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا Whoever takes shaitan as his wali, meaning that world that tries to change the creation of Allah. And over here is a very interesting discussion, which I'm not going to go into details about today, but is at what point of change do we say now they've actually changed the creation of Allah? And that is when things no longer function in the way that Allah intended them to function. Okay? And so this is the reason for the promotion of homosexuality, for example. Right? This is the reason to promote things like synthetic food and synthetic bodies and uh, artificial intelligence uh, mixed in with biology, human biology in this case. They will change the creation of Allah. And Allah says, Allah defines Sabi Ismi Rabbika al-A'la alladhi khalaqa fasawwa walladhi qaddara fahada. Right? Allah created things and Allah guided things to their, their proper way. Okay? When He created the sun, the sun moves in the direction it, Allah, the sun moves as Allah has designed it to move. When Allah creates a cow, it does what Allah has designed it cow to be. When you change that, then you've gone too far and now you're taking shaitan as your wali. You're going into the path of Taghut, you're going into the path of Shaitan, and everything has to be done to what? To avoid that and to oppose that. Woman yatahizis shaitan a waliyan, and whoever takes shaitan as his wali, mindunillah other than Allah. You're not happy with how Allah made you? You're not happy how Allah made you? You have to have genetic modifications? You you're not how happy with how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you? You have to uh you know, make synthetic food? You don't like how Allah made your food? Like, what type of uh, 
you know, from a fitra perspective, this is very, very problematic. And this is man basically, it, uh, you know, uh, man making himself God. Have you taken, seen the one who made his desires, his God? This is the ultimate form of that. Such a people, they're in absolute utter loss. And this, فَقَدْ uh, here, فَقَدْ already, they're already, even in this dunya, they're going to face utter loss. Right? At the end. So, <clears throat> now, uh, let me share with you uh, another uh, verse of the Quran, inshallah, also. Uh, let's see where this is. This verse in Surah Al Isra. Now, as you know, Surah Al Isra is the twin surah of Surah Al Kahf, right? There, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, the Asrabi Abdi, over there, Alhamdulillah, the Anzal Ala Abdi. Over here, Allah says, Qul, O Prophet, tell them, Kunu Hijaratan. Whether your stone, minerals, from which we make the most important part of what? Minerals and stones is the most important part of what is called silicon, which is needed in every IT, every robot, every computer. Okay? And it comes from sand. It comes from minerals. And, kunu hijaratan aw hadida. Or even if you're iron, if you're made from metal, this is almost like uh, or whatever substance which in your minds is even more, uh, you know, more stronger than that or bigger than that or significant than that. And they say, who will bring us back? And the word here is fitra, right? The one who gave you the fitra and made you and originated you awwala marra. Right? The first time. So, <clears throat> when they, uh, perhaps it's very near, especially when they say the, when they're doing, when they're making, they're trying to connect people and merge into human biology, rocks, silicon, and iron, part of the IT world. When they're trying to merge, uh, metals, and minerals into human beings, then asa asa perhaps ayakuna qariba perhaps it is very near that time the day of judgment is now very near, and in fact it is as if the day of judgment has already begun, it's already begun, uh, you know it's uh, it's like when the arm of the clock hits twelve, but you just haven't heard the ring of the bell yet, so it's it's almost just there. And you just are now waiting to hear the bell. This is the end of human history in the Quranic sense of the word. Uh, going back to, okay, so over here where shaitan basically says to Allah, and I will command them to change the creation of Allah. And that's the last. So he'll start with leading people astray. And the ending is a world, a, a world in which it starts with the world where he leads people astray. Slowly and slowly, and then does the, uh, the, the gene, brings in the genes through the cows and the livestock. And then the last world he's talking about is, in the end, I will ask, I will command them. How will he command them? Except that he has his agents on earth. And this is a whole different discussion. And those agents will create a world. That if you are part of that world, and Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذِ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا Whoever takes shaitan as a wali, مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَذَرَ دِنَ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ خَسِرَ خُسْرَانَ مُبِينَ He's already gone deeply, deeply astray. And that is the world that we're entering in. And now I want to uh, make, so I talked a little bit about Qur'an, but I want to also talk about these technologies, right? Where they're putting things in our bodies that give instructions to our cells, and then our cell does something because of something external outside the body, invades our body and tells our body what to do. These technologies, right, are the seeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting in. This is why the state of Israel is the number one state with, you know, booster two and three and four or whatever they got going on. Because these are the seeds Allah is putting in to make them fail. They make their health fail. So when the true fighters in the cause of Allah are faced with these people, they've already been 
putting their, their own promises, their own lives, their own seeds into themselves. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already paving the way for their rise, as you can see in the state of Israel. But also, a subtly, Allah is designing it so that they're also, what? Those people that are going to be part of that army, okay? Those people that are going to be part of that world, okay? It's already being subtly designed that they're going to have, even though they'll have technology, but they won't have health. They'll have technology, but they won't have health. Because they they will be, this is one of the reasons that they Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is paving the way for the final uh, victory that is to come when it comes. So, <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about is when we hear about the discussion about the Jal and he has one eye like a camera, okay, and, uh, you know, he's short and stocky and he has crooked legs and, you know, stocky legs and his hair is like this. You get a description of not a normal human being. You get a this person born in a Jewish family who does seemingly, from the sayings of the Prophet, does not look like a normal human being. And when you see that camera on him and he's talking about God and spirituality and he's bringing in uh, this persona that I'm, I'm Jesus, I'm the Son of God or I'm the Messiah and I can do this, when a mu'min who is illiterate sees him, he will be able to see he is a kafir even though he's talking about Allah, right? And so um, so these are some thoughts that I wonder, I wonder that if this Dajjal, this Masihu Dajjal, uh, and, and there are evidences for this, but the evidence from the Hadith seems to indicate, and evidences from their own books, meaning the people that are awaiting, awaiting for this Messiah, seem to indicate that this person, you know, will not be, uh, just a normal human being. He will be uh, one of those human beings that's definitely been, he's the peak of human uh, magic and the peak of human technology. And he's a modified human being who will be able to trick people into thinking that he's the way. And that is also a whole different discussion. How can somebody trick people? Well, when people are in dis desperate times and somebody is giving you heaven and hell, and somebody has control over the resources, and this person can bring dead the bed, dead back to life, and he seems to be saying good things, and he seems to be victorious wherever he wants to be victorious, and everyone seems to be following him, then most people are sheeps, and most people will follow him. And then even those that are not sheep, many of them will follow him, because every, they don't want to be an outcast. But... Like I said, all these technologies that they're developing is actually in the end going to hurt them. Okay? And uh, this is why? Because shaitan is innahu lakum aduhu mubin. He's your enemy. He's the enemy of every human being. And so then, in the end, he wants to win the people of God, meaning shaitan wants to win the people of Allah, but uh, he doesn't want someone else to win it e either. So, he already has... Uh, you know, uh, begun to inject, you can say, in his coming army uh, weaknesses, okay, that will allow, uh, that will allow them to be, you can say, uh, enslaved uh, by waswasa, and enslaved by poor health, and be enslaved by uh, these thoughts, because in shaytani yajrika majdaddam, remember, anything when it's done with the blood, it is actually a form of magic. And shaitan travels in the blood as... Tra the shaitan travels, uh, shaitan travels in the human being like blood. And so, you know, and shaitan is the enemy of the human being. And so, إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ أَدُوُّ مُبِينَ So, anyway, uh, I end my discussion here. This is the future that they are thinking about and they want. And they desperately want. Not because of some genuine scientific inquiry. No. Because this is where shaitan is leading them. This is where shaitan is commanding them. This is where shaitan is telling them to go. His agents on earth. You know. And so these are the agents of shaitan in their plan. And they want. And, and part of the. You know. I will give them. La, la I will give them hope. 
Hope for what? Power. If you read the Quran, it becomes clear. A certain group of people want power. On the kingdom, the, without the kingdom, they're not interested in Suleiman. They're interested in Suleiman because of his control of the of the jinns and his power. Okay, and and number two, uh, and uh, that they want what they want to live forever. And Surah Al-Baqarah is very clear about this. Okay, that the reason even for magic, one of the reasons is to increase your life, and one of the reasons for magic is power. And so this is what they're doing. They're just trying to increase their life and increase their power. And this is the way Shaitan told them to go. Oh, yes, do this. This is the technology that will save you. But in the end, it may, in, it may increase quantity, but will make their life meaningless and uh, purposeless and hopeless. And they will become abalasa, uh, iblis, like hopeless themselves and this is the and you know say he said a very good thing he said look there are two ways one way is what one way is you go and you want to live forever okay do it through science and the other way is what you want to live forever then find the kawthar of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the uh the the kawthar the haud the river of the prophet the fountain of the prophet where that whoever drinks that will never be thirsty. So you can choose which way you want to go. You can either go the way of science, and the example of science is like a story. A man, you know, he worked. Uh, I think this is one of H. G. Wells' uh, stories, but I'll just mention it very uh, quickly, and then we can end, inshallah. Um, H. <clears throat> G. Wells mentions a story in which you know a man. He had his mom. His mom died, so he did one of these things where they. I'll use the word that the average people use. Uh, you know, he uh, puts a, does freezes his mother, uh, and then you know puts her in a high place, like in some warehouse up there where there's a cold storage, and you know he finally figures out how to bring the dead back to life, and you know he goes up the elevator and he goes there and he brings his mom out and she's alive and he's alive and they're happy and they're coming down the. Uh, elevator and uh, the elevator was so old that the ropes that were or the chains that were being used to make the elevator go up and down had become so weak because it hadn't been used in almost 50 years so when he went up and then when he was coming down one of those chain links broke and the elevator came smashing down and killed both the mother and the son so this is what is going to befall those who are relying on their science and their machines and their technology, uh, it is going to be, uh, it's going to be the the end, right? And so I'll just end here. Uh, please do subscribe. Uh, please, uh, especially for those of you who have seen till the end of this vi video, uh, read my comment section. I have my channel that you can be a member on. Also, inshallah, I'm looking for some funds. If anyone wants to donate, please do. Uh, donate. I have some projects going on that if you want to be have a share in the rewards of those projects, inshallah, then you can also have a reward, reward in those projects that I'm doing. One of them is trying to finish a book and uh, and I need some, um, you can say, help in some art aspects of that. And uh, yeah, so if you, if you feel like it, if your heart tells you that you should give funds, please use that link to do that. And if uh, Allah puts it in your heart, join our Telegram channel. And if Allah puts it in your heart, then subscribe to this channel, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.